So this is the course in geophysical fluid dynamics. And before we start the lecture, I'm going to just take you on a little tour of the atmosphere and the ocean. Okay? So we're going to look at a couple of videos together. And let's just give you an idea of the general circulation. Start with the atmosphere. This is the uh, low-level winds and surface pressure. So the arrows are the winds and the colors are the surface pressure. So the first thing you notice is that there are winds which are swirling around these um, maxima and minima of pressure. So we have a, in the northern hemisphere, we have a high pressure, an anticyclone. The wind is going around it anticlockwise, sorry, clockwise, going around clockwise, anticlockwise in the southern hemisphere around this high pressure. And there, around these high pressure areas, there are a few little low pressure areas. The wind is going around them in the other direction. It's going anticlockwise here in the northern hemisphere, clockwise in the southern hemisphere. And you can see the winds moving around. And uh, you can see that the high pressure areas are much bigger than the low pressure areas. That's fairly normal. Okay, and if we look, if we look in the um, kind of Indian Ocean region, you see another high pressure area here. You can see the, the winds flowing northwards along the coast of Africa. This is Northern Hemisphere summer. So this was about a bit more than a year ago that I made these videos. And uh, in the Pacific region, again, you see another couple of anticyclones, some cyclones, and you see a convergence of the winds in the equatorial region, a little bit north of the equator. Okay, that's the intertropical convergence zone. And uh, then we'll just grab the Earth and bring it around, and let's have a look at the South Pole. So what do we see here? Well, we see a big area of low pressure and uh, intense cyclones, one, two, three, four, five of them around Antarctica. And that's fairly normal to see that kind of uh, configuration and, and a, a jet, this is a winter jet because it's southern hemisphere winter here. Um, let's have a look at the northern hemisphere and we're going to zoom in a bit on the, uh, on the North Atlantic and uh, what do we see? So we see that big anticyclone and it's, as I was saying, the, 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 the anticyclones are bigger than the cyclones. So that, that's, uh, that asymmetry is fairly common. It's, uh, it's uh, because of the non-linear nature of atmospheric dynamics. Um, and now let's, let's look at the actual wind strength. So this is the same wind vectors, and now we're looking at the colors are the wind strength. So you can see the strongest winds are around the cyclones. And now we're going to zoom in a bit more, I think, now. Yeah. Here it is. Let's, let's look in really the northeast Atlantic sector. And here's that very strong cyclone. It's strong enough to have a name. It was called Petra, this one. And you can see the winds, not only are they strong around the cyclone, they're changing direction very abruptly here across this line here. This line is a front, so where wind changes direction very suddenly, that's where temperature is changing very suddenly as well. And so if we look at the northern hemisphere flow, don't forget this is northern hemisphere summer, and so this is a low level wind, and you can see it's stronger over the ocean than it is over the land. Okay, so that's, uh, that's because there's more drag over the land, but then if we go up to 850 millibars, you can see that it's a generally the same patterns. You can see the same cyclones and anticyclones. You can see the winds getting a bit stronger as you go up. Okay. And uh, then I think we're going to go up again. For the moment. Yeah, now we're going to go up to 500 millibars. Now it's really getting stronger and you're starting to see the wind going kind of all around the earth here with the main jets are in the Pacific and the Atlantic. There's a jet here over the Scandinavian region on that particular day as well. And there's a kind of vortex over the over the pole. But you still see these smaller scale features as well. And we're going right up to the top of the troposphere now. That's where the winds are strongest. And you can see the Pacific jet, the Atlantic jet, and strong winds all the way around the Northern Hemisphere, this Asian jet here as well. Um, and that, yeah, that's where the, the winds are strongest. But we're going to keep on going up. Let's go up to 70 millibars. So we're in the stratosphere. And the winds have dropped a little bit. This is the stratosphere, summer hemisphere. Um, and uh, it's a larger scale pattern, really. There's, there's not so much smaller scale detail. Now, if we look in the stratosphere uh, in the tropical regions, you can see these broad easterlies. Okay, so there's the tropical winds in the stratosphere. Now, if we go up even higher to 10 millibars, there you get stronger. OK, 
Okay. So there's, there's the, the winds in the tropics in the stratosphere tend to change sign as you go up and down, and with, uh, as a, over long time scales as well. And now if we look at the southern hemisphere, this is the winter hemisphere to the stratosphere, so that's the stratospheric vortex, which is uh, much stronger, of course. Um, so that is the atmosphere. So let's have a look at the ocean now. And so you can see the ocean... This is the, the, you can just about see the currents are these swirling features and the colors are the temperature anomalies. And you can see most of the strong currents are either in the western boundaries or in the tropical regions. Here you can see some tropical currents in the Indian Ocean. And you see a lot of perturbations as well, like wave-like motions uh, near the... And here's the very strong and unstable Antarctic circumpolar current as well, which goes all the way around. So that's where the strongest activities in the ocean currents. So this is surface currents. Now if we look at the Pacific, there's a strong western boundary current here with lots of eddies, that's the Kuroshio. We have, um, again, these tropical systems which are confined to a region which is very close to the equator. And we're going to talk about that in, uh, in lecture four, I think. Uh, let's have a look at the Gulf Stream. Um, so here's a very strong current which flows past Florida and off, off the coast of Cape Hatteras and out into the Atlantic Ocean. And you can see it's meandering and shedding cyclonic and anticyclonic eddies as it goes. So the Gulf Stream is not just this river. It's a very, uh, very unstable, active, meandering system. And then if we look in the Pacific, the equivalent current in the Pacific is called the Kuroshio. And again, you can see it's, it's a, it flows between cold water to the north and warm water to the south, and uh, it's a, it's a baroclinically unstable region with lots of... The, these, these eddies are equivalent to those cyclones and anticyclones that I was showing you in the atmosphere. Um, and then let's look at the equatorial region in the Pacific. Uh, so, again, this is just a better view of those equatorially confined wavy, wave-like systems, which we're going to... There's a whole family of different kinds of equatorial waves, which we're going to look at in, in, uh, later in the course. And then the, you can see them also in the Atlantic. So here's the tropical Atlantic, here's the Brazil current, here's a counter-current, here's the, easter, the, the easterly current. It, it's a very complicated current system in, in the mean currents, but you can see also that there's a lot of variability um, in, in this current system. And finally, I think we're going to go down yeah, to South Africa and uh, the Antarctic circumpolar current. And then there's this current which comes down the coast of South Africa, the Agulhas current, which then gets, gets turned into the Antarctic circumpolar current and, and meanders and sheds eddies and is also uh, um, emitting eddies periodically into the, in the other direction, up into the, uh, into the Atlantic. So there, that's, that's a, a kind of descriptive tour of the atmosphere and ocean. And there's a lot of uh, phenomena there to get to grips with. And what I want to do in this course is um, not to go into like, each one of those kinds of systems one by one and, and describe them one at a time. What I want to give you is a sort of framework for understanding the dynamics of these kinds of systems, uh, an, over, an overall framework. 